Hello everyone and welcome. In today's tutorial, we'll be retouching some Rembrandt portraits that I recently took. So we'll be getting this photo here from this photo here. So let's hop in here and get started. Okay, let's take the photo that we're going to be editing and open it into the develop module. Now, if you're interested in how I took these photos, I'll put a link to that tutorial in the cards above, as well as in the description below. Also, if you're interested in knowing how I corrected the color on these using the data color color checker, I'll put a link to that tutorial in the cards as well, and also down in the description below. Okay, now that we got the photo opened up, if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you know the first thing I want to do is go down and turn on my lens corrections. So let's click remove chromatic aberration, as well as enable profile corrections. And you can see my Canon 50mm STM lens was detected. Okay, now if we got that done, let's go back up to the top. Now I've already got my white balance set and I'm using a 6250 for plus three on the tint. So my colors and white balance are already completely set and the photo looks really good and a great photo to start with. All right. Now let's go down that we've already done that and do our cropping. Now I want to crop this in because I have a lot of extra space here too on the side next to your shoulder. And you know that extra space might be looking good if you're doing like a for desktop or a wide photo. But I think for this particular photo, I want to crop that down something to like 8 by 10 You know, something that would look better for print. So let's go find uh, 4 by 5 which is also 8 by 10 listed here. And let's move it over to it look good. Now I want a little bit of space on the side of her fingers here, but I want to reduce a lot of the space here on the side. So I'm going to crop this down. Now this is going to crop some of her hair out, but that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Now let's move this over just a little bit here. Think about this area right here. It's actually going to start looking pretty decent. I think that's close enough to the original photo. I'm going to click done and take a look at it. And so we think now I think that looks really good that gives a little bit of extra space on the side of here while still cropping it in quite a bit and I think that's gonna look a really good crop for this photo now when it comes to cropping you just have to crop to your own personal taste everybody's own personal taste is a little different All right. now that we get that now let's adjust our highlight shadows whites and blacks because the exposure and the contrast on this already look really good to me now, I think before I adjust the highlight shadows, whites and blacks, which is these up here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and lower my clarity. Now on portrait photos, I do like to lower my clarity quite a bit. I think I'm gonna lower this, but a negative 50. And that's gonna soften the image up and make the skin really glow. A lot of people really like that. So I actually like it quite a bit as, as well. And I'm gonna go back and add some clarity to the areas I think that need clarity later on at the end of the video. But as soon as we got that done, let's go back and adjust our highlights. Now, if you watched any other tutorials, you know that the highlights here really control the brightness of the skin. So we can blow the skin out or we can make it too dark. Now, you want to be careful with this. I think I'm going to bring this up probably about a 17 or 18. That's what I had it before. Originally on the original photo, I had it on a plus 18. Now, that's making the skin really shine, but our whites are still kind of low as well. So now I'm gonna bring the whites up an equal amount, also a plus 18. And we'll take a look at that. If it looks too bright, and I think it is looking kind of too bright. Now let me zoom in on the corner, and you can see on the histogram that the reds here, which also has uh, skins have a lot of reds, and are starting to break out past this little uh, point right here. Now I don't wanna to go too much over into this little highlighted area because it makes the uh, image look too bright. Okay, so let me zoom back out here. I think I'm gonna lower this probably to about a plus 15 each. So if you want to, you can just type in the number. You don't wanna to have to use the sliders. So if you're trying to get a precise number, you just type it in like I just did there. Okay, now that's looking pretty decent. Now I'm gonna bring up the sh uh, shadows here now. It's about a plus 25 to 26. Let me bring it here just a little bit. Yeah, plus 26. Now you've noticed that it actually brightens up the hair quite a bit. Shadows have a lot to do with the hair, as well as the background. 
Now the software or Lightroom can't differentiate between the background and the hair, so you just kind of have to do the best you can. So yeah, about plus 27 is close enough. Now, this is starting to look really, really good here. But the thing is, I think I want to bump the color up saturation just a little bit. Now you want to be extremely careful with saturation and portraits, especially since we've already color calibrated this uh, and everything. But I feel like it's still a little bit stronger on the color. Easiest way to do that is just to punch in, say like a five, you know, eight, maybe 10 might be too much on your portraits. It really depends. I think I'm just gonna punch in eight, see how that looks. And I think they added just a pinch of more color back to the lips as well as the skin and stuff. And I think it looks really good right there. Just a simple plus eight on the saturation. Very minor, but you know, subtleties make the world of difference. You don't want to make it over because you can easily overkill on saturation. Okay, wonderful. Now to get that done, let's go down and do the detail here. Now, a default, Lightroom likes to sharpen it up here. Uh, it's this base default, a 25, a one and a 25. I don't particularly care too much for it. And it's just kind of a generic sharpening for every lens out there. And it doesn't, I don't think it actually works perfect for every lens. I think you have to really fine tune this the, uh, the better your lens is. And this lens that I'm actually using is actually quite a really good lens to be as cheap as it is. So let's go back and let's readjust the uh, sharpening here. Now the sharpening I originally used was a 61, a 0.07, a 63, a 42. Cause we do have to mask this out. Uh, so let's go ahead and adjust this up. Now, if you hit the alt key or the option key, you'll get a black and white version of this. And this is really good at helpful because it lets you uh, see how much sharpening you get without any kind of color affecting your uh, your viewing and everything. So I'm gonna bring this up probably about 66. Now the uh, radius here is the size of the sharpening. So the finer it is, the lower the number. You can make it more coarse uh, the, by bringing it up. Now you wanna be very careful with this because you can easily start making sharpening look like a lot of noise. So in this particular one, I originally used a 0.07, and it may help if you want to zoom in on something like the lips that you want uh, to actually see to get a better idea. So I can see you can press the Alt key, and you can kind of get an idea by looking on the screen here. Now a 0.08 is pretty close. Now detail is also really helps accentuate the uh, sharpening stuff. Like I said, you always want to be very careful with this. So let me press the Alt key and bring up the detail. And the detail I had on it before was, I think it was a 63. So let me bring that up. And it really is going to make the sharpening quite strong. As you can see, it may be a little too strong for us. But keep in mind, we haven't yet masked anything out and we haven't did any noise reduction. So let me go ahead and slide the noise reduction over here to about a 10 or 11. And now that we've got that done, let's mask this out. We want to keep uh, masking it until there is no uh, sharpening on the background, just in the face and the facial areas that we want sharpened. It's about 55 is looking pretty good here. I think originally I had it on about 42 though. So let me back up just a little bit. Yeah, about 48 is pretty good. So I'm going to see you get the areas that we want sharpened, sharpened. Okay. I think the sharpening just a little bit. Tiny bit too much. Let me back down just a little bit. Yeah. I think that's looking pretty decent. Okay. Now to get sharpening done, let's go down and add a little bit of post crop netting. Really want to, you know, kind of make the background more darker around the edges. So let's go ahead and let's bring this uh, down quite a bit. Remember, if you bring up on this, you get white. If you bring it down, you get dark. Okay, now I'm gonna bring this down. I think I brought it down before about a negative 40, which is quite strong, especially what I'm used to using. But I think it did really good to darken the background, make everything focus in towards the face. And I'm gonna feather this out about a 71 here. I guess what I used for was 71, but 70 is close enough. I think it's looking pretty decent right there. Now, 
that's all the global adjustments. Let's go down and do some more uh, what you call local adjustments. And that's adjustments we do use with the brush and like spot removal and stuff of that nature. Now let's zoom in here and let's get the spot removal tool. Let's get this little small blemish. Remove that one. And that should get rid of it. There we go. Took Lightroom long enough. Let's see if there's any few other blemishes. Now the thing is when it comes to blemishes, you really just want to look for the ones that really mess with the light. If it doesn't really mess with the light too much, then don't worry about it. Okay, I think there was some, yeah, maybe some dry skin by the eye there. Let me go ahead and get rid of that little small piece. There, now that's all we had to do for the spot removal. Just kind of remove some areas that might insinuate some you know, might pick up the light too much. It's what you really want to watch for. So now they got that done, let's go ahead and grab our first brush here. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to go down and find my skin softening brush. Now I have a softened skin mild here, and I don't, I know a lot of the beauty photos, especially the close headshots that I use quite a bit of, you know, you know minus in the clarity to really make the skin soften. But for these portraits, I'm not going to go that deep on them. Now, the clarity here I'm using here is a minus 50 to 51. Uh, right now, it's just set on 51, but 50 is about what you want it. But I also want to increase the sharpening to 25. And that's, like I said, that's this, uh, mild skin softening that I'll use for this particular one. So let me zoom in right quick, and you can take a close look at this preset. As you see here, it said clarity minus 50 to 51. Sharpness 25. That's a softening skin mild brush that I use. And of course, I will use a uh, feather and flow about uh, 75 here. So let me adjust this down. There we go. So let me go ahead and start brushing that on. And you can see, you now her skin, there's really no blemishes. So I know a lot of people are like, there's no skin on a young teenager that looks bad. And you're absolutely correct, except this is really for light to make the skin glow. That's the whole reason we do this, to kind of fight a little bit of shadows, make more of the skin kind of just glow like a little angel. Okay, and that's all we had to do for that. Now, let's go ahead and zoom in a bit closer here. I'm going to go to zoom in about a two to one. Or maybe too much, maybe one to two. There we go, that's the one I was actually wanting. <laughs> All right. Now to get that done, I wanna actually go here and click new. Let's create a new brush. Now let's go up here. I want to find eye detail, eye detail brush. And again, if you haven't got this uh, brush, it is a simple one of contrast to 50, clarity of 75, and a sharpness of 50. This is what I use to really you know, make the eyes and stuff really stand out and darken the eyelashes. Because when it comes to flash photography, it really does uh, brighten up everything. Sometimes you lose detail, and this really helps bring, that, uh, bring back the detail in the eyes here. Let me zoom in one to one here. Okay. I think this is looking quite wonderful. Let's see if I can't darken that in some more. Ah, that looks pretty decent. Okay, let's put new again. This time we're going to go to eye white. Let me see here. Eye white, let me find it. There it is, simple one. Now this uh, eye white brush, all I'm really doing here is, uh, is brighten the eyeballs up. One uh, half a stop, 0.5 on the exposure, and a saturation of minus 100. So therefore, what it's going to do is just basically take any kind of color off the white part of the eye. So you want to be careful with this brush. You may have to zoom it in quite, uh, shrink it down small and keep it off certain areas. So to remove any kind of redness whatsoever, it's in the eye, brighten them up just a little bit too, make them look really healthy, really easy to use. Okay. Now that we got that one done, let's click new again. And I want to click on the circular graduate filter. That's the one right here in the corner. Let me zoom in right quick for you. It's this one, okay? Get that one, 
draw a little graduated filter here on across the iris and about right there looks really good now i want to go down i want to find iris enhance now for this particular one i'm going to use the iris enhance of one stop now what that means let me zoom in is i'm going to have an exposure of plus one which is one on the exposure a clarity uh, additional of 10 and a saturation of 66. so that's really going to make the eye stand up a lot better so when you get that one done, you can simply duplicate it and drag it over and put it on the other one. Once you get done with that, click done. Now we're starting to look pretty decent here. Now I want to go down and grab the brush again. This time I'm going to go down to lips. Now that's another preset I got. Now I got plenty of presets. All this one is, is a clarity of 33 and a saturation of 33. Now that's a very simple one. What we're doing is kind of counteracting the uh, clarity reduction I used on the face, as well as kind of bringing back the color that's lost cause of the flash. So I just kind of brush down real gentle like, and that's it. It's brushing on quite easy. Done. Let's back out and take a look at the photo. The photo's starting to look really, really nice. Actually, it looks really nice now. There's one small detail I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna click on Jewels which jewels is a very simple one. It's another brush I got to really make kind of earrings or rings pop. It's at one stop on the exposure as well as 100 on the clarity. You know, all I'm doing is go over here to these earrings, just kind of rub it on just a little bit, make them pop just a little. So that makes the earrings look really nice. Then click done. And that's it. That's all I did for this uh, photo, really simple. Like I said, if you're interested in, on, on how I actually took the photo, you will see that tutorial. There will be a link in the cards at the top, as well as a link down in the description on my Rembrandt lighting uh, video. And that's it for this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, how about hitting the thumbs up? Thumbs up's always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Subscribing is free, it's for you, and let you know when I'll release more videos. Until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.